Meet the New Romantics. This is so much fun. New Romanticism was a musical movement and a fashion mo movement. And it really started here at a store called The World's End at the bottom of the King's Road in Chelsea in London. Take a look at this store. It sort of looks like an 18th century or even 17th century inn, doesn't it? Look at that enormous clock. The hands spun around backwards like you were going back in time. And this was the centre of the pirate look. The pirate look. And who invented it? These two. Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren. Malcolm McLaren did the musical element, and of course Vivian Westwood did the fashion. It was the opposite to punk rock. This is how genius these two were. Punk rock, it was, uh, it was uh, dirty, it was angry, it was aggressive, it was shocking. It was a reaction to what was going on in the world. In the 70s, in the 80s, dreary mass unemployment. Did people want to dress in a way that reflected that? No! They wanted to dress in a way that uh, uh, stuck a finger up to Margaret Thatcher. It was about being a dandy again. It was about dressing up. Sure, I've got no money and I have to stand in, in line to get my welfare check, but I am going to dress up like a pirate, like a, a cavalier, like an outlaw. It was wonderful. And this is an image of uh, Vivian Westwood's pirate collection. So many different eras are being played with here, but they are all sort of six, uh, 17th, 18th century, aren't they? Um, you sort of have a bit of a bicorn hat there. Uh, look at this jacket and then look at the uh, sans-culotte pants. This is a band that totally embraced the pirate look. They are called Adam and the Ants. They are not wearing stage costumes. This is how kids on the streets of London actually dressed for about five minutes in the early 80s. The lead singer is called Adam Ant, by the way. And you'll see that these boys are wearing makeup. Boy George was another person who embraced uh, the, the Vivian Westwood world's end look. I would like you to look at the print on his uh, top there. This print was so famous, so synonymous with this look, um, so ripped off. And here is another fellow just on the streets of London. Look at his little pirate hat. Look at that print again. This was a revolution. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It was exciting. I can't tell you how much everyone loved And this means that one of the designers of the decade, again, is Vivian Westwood. Vivian Westwood had so many iconic collections from the early to mid 80s that I want to run through them with you so that you will be au courant with them all. Of course, the pirate collection. Here it is, a very clear image so you can see what's going on here. And I've just realized how marvelous it, marvelous it is. I don't have to explain to you what people wore in the 17th and 18th centuries to then explain what Vivian Westwood was doing here. You know this. You see? Now do you understand, I hope you understand in our penultimate lecture, the importance of fashion history. After that came this, it was very strange, her buffalo collection. She drew on Peruvian and Chilean traditional attire. Um, Chilean llama herders things like that. It was sort of grubby and dark, but so odd. Nobody had seen anything like it. Part of the buffalo collection was the buffalo hat. There's Malcolm McLaren wearing one. And uh, that hat's made a comeback quite recently, hasn't it? 
And then there was Punkature. This was extremely odd. This drew on the Regency era, which you know all about. I don't have to explain that now. It drew on the Victorian era, and it also drew sort of on the 1930s. And it also drew on insane asylums throughout all of these eras. It was extremely odd. She opened a store in the mid-90s, uh, uh, sorry, 80s, called Nostalgia of Mud. Take a look at it there. It was very, very strange. I went in there a few times, and I remember it smelt of damp felt, and it was very intimidating. Uh, here are some uh, images from the Nostalgia of Mud era. But I want you to look at the image on the left. Bras on top. It was not Jean-Paul Gaultier who first did bras on top. It was Westwood who first did bras on top. In fact, she was the first to do everything, wasn't she? Which brings us to our style icon. Oh, wow. She's called Annabella Lewin. And she was the 15-year-old lead singer of Bow Wow Wow. Now, those of you who have seen the movie uh, Marie Antoinette might remember the song, I Want Candy. That was by Bow Wow Wow. That version that appears in the film is by Bow Wow Wow. And there is Bow Wow Wow and Annabella in full glory and in full Westwood, all of them. She was discovered uh, working at a dry cleaner's by a friend of Malcolm McLaren, who alerted him to the beauty of Annabella Lewin. Uh, he auditioned her. It turned out she was actually a very good singer and a really fun, charismatic person, and she became Vivian Westwood's muse. There she is on the cover of a Bow Wow Wow album, and then, much to Malcolm McLaren's delight, the band got into trouble with this album cover in which she is semi-nude. This album cover is replicating a very famous painting, um, Jardinet sur l'herbe by Manet. Um, but, oh, it was terribly shocking, especially as she was so young. As I said, she was Vivian Westwood's muse, and there she is being styled by Vivian herself. And look at the print on Annabella's uh, blouse there. She had this wonderful uh, mohawk, but instead of it being like stiff and spiky, she would do her mohawk in braids and curls to make it very feminine and interesting. I loved her. I still do. And there she is again. You can see why she became a much imitated style icon, right? Everyone who knows about fashion knows about the Blitz. This is part of this whole scene. The Blitz was a nightclub in London. And I have to talk to you about the Blitz kids. These were kids who took dressing up to new realms. They were unemployed or had low paying jobs and they would live for dressing up in the most outrageous, outlandish, out of this world costumes and then going to the blitz nightclub it was just a nightclub but they are known as the blitz kids they took dressing up and new romanticism to whole new heights they were androgynous as well so this was androgynous dress up as an escape from the boredom and economic hardship of long-term unemployment or low paying paying jobs because you know what Fashion is never an island. So one last time, and just for fun, let's do an anatomy. Let's take an androgynous figure and get him or her, I think it might turn out to be a him, ready for a night at the Blitz. Although, you know, the Blitz had a very strict dress code. If you weren't quite dressed up enough, you weren't allowed in. So let's try to get him ready. It starts with some very colourful stockings, some pirate boots. 
his uh, silky song culotte pants. So many belts, you couldn't have enough belts thrown around your hips. Then we'll give him a Vivian Westwood pirate blouse and a cape. And more bangles and bracelets than one could ever imagine could fit on a wrist. A scarf, and then, oh, we've got to give him full, full Blitz Kid new romantic makeup. He looks a bit worried there, doesn't he? He looks worried that he won't get into the Blitz, that he won't get past the doormen. Well, he won't with hair like that. We have to give him much more interesting hair. And a pirate hat with a few feathers. I think he's good to go, but, you know, he's unemployed, isn't he? He lives in some dreary bedsit. That was uh, the name that we gave to one room that you would rent. Bed, sit, bedroom and sitting room in the suburbs, miles from London. So let's give him his Walkman because everybody had to have a Walkman so he could listen to Duran Duran as he waits at the bus stop. Oh, bless him. I don't know why I'm making fun of this character we've created. That was me every Saturday night in the early 80s, believe me. Let's give him some friends to make sure he gets in. Let's give him Adam and the Ants. Now he is sure to get into the Blitz. <laughs> 